On this episode of Travels with Bill, we're exploring how this picture-perfect moment came to be. As Jocelyn Marchuk and Cameron Colhart running into the middle to get in spot and... Presto, that's the picture you've all seen. So how do we get here and where'd all those quilts come from? Well, that's what we're exploring on this episode. Okay, can I have your attention? Jocelyn's gonna speak. <laughs> okay, everybody, I don't know if you um, kind of heard about what's going on or not, but um, a couple months ago, I put a challenge out, I guess, to all my quilting friends to make superhero quilts for the children um, in cancer care or may wind up being in other care at Christmas time at the Children's Hospital. Now to get the photo, not only do you need the quilts, which Jocelyn and her friends took care of, but you need a bunch of kids too. It's a very cold morning. In fact, so cold school buses are cancelled today because of the cold. That means there's not a lot of kids at the regional school, but they've been rounding them up here for about 10 minutes and eventually found 21 kids willing to go outside. The photo would have been taken indoors, except the gym's under renovation. So it had to be outside in the cold to get that perfect shot showing off all the quilts. Well, how'd the quilts come to be? Jocelyn's the expert at telling us about that. Uh, oh, right. So um, early on in COVID, I started a pattern testing venture with um, different quilt designers. And um, one of the quilt designers is Jennifer Long. She's with Be So Inspired out of uh, Southern Manitoba. And she came out with this superhero quilt. And I thought, as soon as I saw it come up for test, I thought, oh, wow, this would just be fabulous if we could get a whole bunch of them and give them to the children's hospital for kids in care at Christmas time, right? Because they aren't with their families and whatever. Um, so anyhow, it was COVID. So of course, nothing could be taken there because of restrictions and germs and everything else. And so I just kind of kept it in the back of my mind. And then just in the last year, well, the last not half a year probably, um, uh, more and more posts started coming out about her superhero quilts out in the public and more in the stores and everything. And I thought, you know, I got to do something now. I can't just let this sit. And uh, so I went to my quilting ladies and I threw out a challenge and I said, if you create the top and, uh, and supply me with the back, I will quilt it and supply the batting and do the binding and make the cards and deliver it to the children's hospital. And they just all went with it and I wound up with 22. And they're from women from all over. And uh, like I said earlier, even a lady from Reno, Nevada messaged me and wanted to be part of the cause. So um, I'm super stoked. I can't wait to take them to the children's hospital. Um, I called there, they're super excited. So, so yeah, that's, that's kind of where it went. And I'm hoping that this, the pattern designer will actually meet me in Winnipeg, but I'm not sure what her schedule is. So I'm waiting to hear from her about that. Oh, the excitement is very obvious. So a few short instructions here to the kids. They've all got their quilts and it's time to head on outside and see if we can finally get that picture. Now, if you saw this story on the provincial news, you heard it was 21 quilts, but you hear Jocelyn talking about 22. So what happened to that missing quilt? Well, it's a very special story about that. We're going to get to that in a minute, but first let's see if we can get that photo of all the quilts and see if the kids can manage to get them all arranged without getting them dirty. Of course, if they get dirty, that's going to be a problem for the hospital. So we've got to try and keep them clean and get the short kids in the right spot, the tall kids in the right spot, and try not to have anyone freeze to death on such a cold day. Jocelyn tells us it came together pretty quick. Well, it was beginning of October. I actually first went to the Empty Bobbin. Um, I stopped in at her retreat, and I mentioned it to the ladies there. And then it was part of the retreat that I host, uh, Remembrance Day weekend. And um, yes, and they all got delivered to me probably by about the 15th of November. And I quilted them all since then and I just finished the last one yesterday. <laughs> so yeah. The idea of course is that the kids head sticks out. So when you lay this quilt on them, they become a superhero just because their head's sticking out the rest of the body. Well, it looks like a superhero. Very cool. Of course, they're all exactly the same pattern. That's kind of the point, but each one has been done by somebody else. That's why you see so much individuality in it. One of them is very special too. It's double-sided. It actually has a cape on the back. Most of them are just a regular quilt on the back. Well, they're still working on getting the photo together, aren't they? Well, I'm all about the kids. Um, I used to work in the school, so it's, you know, the kids are kind of where my heart is. And when you see 
um, you know, we've seen families struggle in the past um, with kids who have been diagnosed with cancer and, and have to go through all the struggles. And it just, to me, it was just something that I could maybe do, just a little piece, um, you know, to use... Uh, I don't know, our talents and our time just to maybe create a little bit of joy for these kids and their families through the holidays. So um, it's a tough time. So hopefully we did that. There it is. Just about the perfect picture. We'll get everybody into it. Snap that photo and then ta-da! It's, uh, well, it's history really, isn't it? There they go. The two of them get in there and smile for the photo. All done. What then happened to that 22nd quilt because only 21 made it to Winnipeg? Well, there's Cameron picking a quilt because part of the whole point of this was that Cameron himself got to pick one out. Cameron, of course, is recovering from cancer. He's had a rough go of it if you've been following the story. He was a Terry Fox ambassador this year. He's had surgery recently, but he's up and about and he was at school this day to pick out the quilt. He picked the double-sided one. So here he is getting the quilt as a presentation from Jocelyn to Cameron. Oh, it looks so amazing, doesn't it? That is a superhero, if nothing else. We'll get it on here, here in a second, too. Uh, in fact, much of his family was here celebrating this morning. Uh, not only that he was here, but the quilts and that so many kids are going to be helped by it. As you can imagine, if you're stuck in hospital, it just makes everything so much better, right? To have something extra special and they get to take it home with them after. Amazing what a community can do when they all come together, isn't it? We'll get Mommy in here as well. Sister's there. Cameron's in the middle. Show off the quilt. Take a few more photos. That does it for this episode of Travels with Bill. Hopefully you've enjoyed seeing the background of how that photo came to be and how all those kids managed to get those quilts all on display. Those ladies did so much hard work. Oh, it's so impressive. Maybe next year they'll do even more. We'll see you next time on the next episode of Travels with Bill.